Hello, I am Dominic and today I want to ask you this. Do you remember when 3D was the future? No, not that 3D. That one actually was the future. I meant this 3D. Oh. Shortly after launch of the PlayStation 3, Sony decided it needed to sell some more TVs. It was trying to convince everyone this would be the next big thing they just had to get a new display for. They failed, and 3D failed with them. Not least because it makes you look like a loon. Luckily, it's not really gone. Even now we can all experience its wonders, and in much higher quality than the 240p the PlayStation 3 could manage. Support seems to be waning, but there's still a huge number of displays that can do it. My TV does 3D. My projector does it. And my monitor can do it as well. And each and every one of them needs different glasses. Only the monitor came with the glasses included, but that was back in 2012 when Sony still pretended it cared. The projector needs glasses which support something called DLP Link. While the TV needs Bluetooth ones. These were thankfully really cheap. They are not built to last. Good job everyone involved. I really can't imagine why it failed. Anyway, it turns out my computer, and very probably your computer as well, can also do 3D. The machine I'm using happens to run Pop! OS, though it should work on just about anything. The graphics card is a GeForce 980 Ti with the recent 470 proprietary driver. I'll be testing everything at 1080p. I first noticed working options to enable 3D when I played the Shadow of the Tomb Raider demo. After I bought the full game and downloaded Feral's Linux port, they were unfortunately gone. Switching to the Proton version of the game thankfully brings them back, and it becomes as simple as toggling the switch. The only 3D mode shadow supports is side by side. The display won't automatically detect it's being fed a 3D image, and it must be switched on manually. And voila! Awesome 3D vision! Shadow is great in 3D. It's worth upping brightness to compensate for the darker image 3D glasses provide. The only times I have any discomfort is when there's something very close to the camera. Especially when Lara comes up for air, the image gets pretty uncomfortable. The loss of resolution is noticeable mostly on sharp edges like the balloon cords and the neon sign here, and on subtitles and menu options, but overall I'd say it adds more to the experience than it takes away. This makes me really happy. I haven't played Shadow yet, and now I'm really looking forward to doing it all in 3D. After closing the game, the desktop will not be very readable. Just as the 3D mode has to be switched on manually, it also needs switching off. As a little bonus, any screenshots you take in-game can be viewed in 3D as well. Rise of the Tomb Raider offers the same 3D experience, though it wouldn't remember the setting and I would have to enable it every time I started the game. This is bad! They're closing in! We're gonna lose Sing! Jensen, I can't reach him! Deus Ex Mankind Divided, notably another Square Enix game, offers the same functionality. The Linux native versions of all these lack the in-game options, though all the settings are still present in their configuration files. Of these, only Deus Ex runs correctly. Rise ignores the setting, while Shadow simply crashes on start. While the 2013 Tomb Raider and Deus Ex Human Revolution apparently also have 3D modes, I was unable to enable either. This may have something to do with this logo that appears when both games start. Stupid vendor lock-in. Another game series that supports 3D is Trine. 
I myself have played through all of Trine 2 like that on the PlayStation 4. The native versions show greyed out 3D options in-game, but these have to be enabled from the launcher, and the ones on Linux lack the requisite setting. Editing the config files has no effect either. The Proton version does have the option, and it offers a lot of 3D modes to choose from. The Trine games are absolutely fantastic. They look like they were designed with 3D in mind, and playing them in mundane 2D is really doing them a disservice. Really, if you do try it, these are the games you should put on first. But wait, Dominic, I can hear you think. Is all this hassle worth it so I can play some five games? Fear not, I say. It's very easy to add 3D to just about any game out there. You need two things. The first is Reshade, in their own words, a post-processing injector. The second is Super Depth 3D, a shader for Reshade. The installation is very simple, though you'll need to install it separately for every game in Steam or Lutris. The procedure for Reshade was provided by a clever Redditor. I'll put the link to the post in the video notes. You need to copy two Reshade files to the folder where the game's executable is, and rename one of them. Then, install a single DLL with Proton Tricks or Wine Tricks and set the DXGI DLL override in Wine Config. Then, copy the Super Depth 3D shaders to the same spot and launch the game. Reshade will immediately come up at the top if it's installed correctly. It won't find the shaders unless you explicitly enter the correct directory in settings. Just reload the shaders, enable the Super Depth 3D shader, and there you go. Dark Souls in 3D. Almost every game I tested worked instantly. The effect varies. Some, like Dark Souls, look great. Others, less so. Super Depth 3D offers a lot of options. With some tweaking, I was able to visibly improve the games I tested. And yes, Human Revolution is now also in 3D. Take that, Square Enix, with your silly games. And there you have it. A whole new stereoscopic world dug up from the depths of time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. In 2D.